see his horse moving. Here. Hello, my friends, and welcome to another exciting adventure into God's limitless outdoors. This week, we are going to be following along over the shoulder of my brother Colton as he chases down his Idaho six point bull elk. This trip had been unbelievable up to this point, and it was one of those falls that you'd call an Indian summer. We didn't get any rain, it was hot, it was unbelievable, and the elk were still rutting extremely hard. And I had already harvested a bull, and our friend Tom Fisher had already harvested his bull, and Colton came riding in on his ponies just after dark with an unbelievable surprise when he got to camp. My brother Colton's gonna be narrating this hunt from here out, and we hope that you enjoy it as much as we enjoy putting it together. I was wondering which Uber this was. It was Western Uber. Oh, I, <laughs> I wanted Northern Uber. Oh. Well, Is your lion guys. hanging over? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that even real? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if you'd believe me. <laughs> I believe you. That's funny. Yeah. Oh my gosh, dude. Yeah. I'm gonna need a picture of this one. That. That's a great arrival. Oh my gosh. How you doing? Good. You know, just been going since <laughs> four o'clock this morning. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> dude, I've seen it all. <laughs> and how did the? Oh. <laughs> How did they... <laughs> you just show up here with a lion over the top of the horse. Yeah. That's I great. It was a fitting thing to do. Oh, man. Uh, not a giant cat, but it wasn't a friendly cat. I've dealt with quite a few lions at this point in my life, and this old starving female definitely had something wrong with her. It turned out she had a broken canine and she was looking for an easy meal. Unfortunately for her, the horses and I weren't it. One of our favorite things to do, especially as we get older, is to sit back and watch the animals. There is so much that you can learn from them, what they're eating, their habits, where they're living. It, it's honestly, it's one of the most important things that you can do, and it, it teaches you so much so quickly. And a lot of people tend to skip over that opportunity. And we had the best opportunity that there was. These elk were across the way, very similar habitat to what was underneath us. And we are going to use what we learned here on my bull in just a few minutes. All right, it's my first morning in here. Justin and Tom have been killing bulls, so I came down with the horses, rode in last night, and uh, now it's elk hunting time. So we're already seeing bulls, but we're gonna try and stay on this ridge. We had been seeing bulls all over the place, but we decided to leave the bulls across the way alone and focus on this ridge. Justin had been seeing elk all over down in this burned off timber, and we knew that I should be dropping down in there to try and make a play on a bull. This bull in particular, I want you to remember him because you're about to see him again in just a few minutes. Something that we've learned over the years is that when you're moving through this timber, you think you're seeing everything, especially in a burn, but you are absolutely not seeing everything. So the key is, is to move slowly, pick everything apart, keep your eyes wide open, and watch for just even the slightest movement, the slightest bit of tan, anything that you can find that resembles an elk, and just watch it all unfold. It is incredible how many things you'll walk by if you don't pay attention very closely and take your time with this hunt.
We're in the back country of Idaho and it is the hottest October that we have ever experienced. Right now we're in the middle of a burn searching for a big bull. This big bull ended up giving us the slip, but we knew there were a lot more elk down here and we knew he wouldn't go too far. So we kept pressing forward and working the timber as best we could. It was extremely challenging as we kept running into smaller bulls and little pockets of cows all over the place.
After just barely busting this herd, we knew we needed to switch our approach. So we came around this backside of this hill, and wouldn't you know it, the bulls were right over the top. If you look closely, you can see the shadow of the bull's antlers moving against this brush. This is a classic example of not seeing everything that's there unless you look really closely. And this bull was just about to step out. He's a good bull, isn't he? Yeah, six point. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. I'm deaf now. That was crazy. <laughs> that was psycho. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. He's heavy. Yeah, he looked good. He's a good heavy bull. Yeah, looks real good. I'm happy with that. Yeah, now we're gonna watch the big, big bull walk up. Well, that's okay. I think he was the bull. It's that hunting for sheep. Yeah, 19 days of hunting for sheep. I'm not really a sheep hunter, dude. No, I'm an elk hunter. Oh, oh there, 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 there. Oh, it wasn't a big bull. Dude. I think this one's as good as they come. He looked like... He looked like good sex. Head, he looked heavy to me. I think he's a little short on the main beams, but besides that, he's good. Let's go check him out. This is why we keep shooting, or why animals don't die on the first shot with us. It's because we keep shooting them quickly. And then run. Oh, 
I have had a handful of elk get away with one bullet in them, but I've never had an elk get away with two bullets two in it. Bullets. Never. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good respectable six point. That's awesome. Something really awesome that we realized when we were putting this video together is that this bull was the same bull that Justin got on video just before he took his bull. That's cool. Yeah. Oh man. We had to like saw down these trees. So Colton and I are making some food here and we were talking. Colton just rode in last night. He got a mountain lion and we've killed three bulls in under two days now. Three bulls in 36 hours out of here. And it's fascinating because the, con the contrast, contrasts are always just like eye-opening because Colton hunted 19 days for his sheep. We spent all this time in this unit and we never even saw, I never saw an elk and there was no life. And then you come into a place like this and it's just like, I think we've seen uh, seven bulls this morning. One of them was across the way. We got on six in here, passed up a few bulls and Colton shot this one. And it goes to show you that Location means a lot, like where you are in life. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Like there's a destination, there's a reality, a life that Jesus promises. And there's a real place. Like when we talk about heaven, when we talk about eternally where we're gonna be, it's a place. We always talk about how, you know, somebody's in a better place. And the reality is if a place exists, there's a way to it. And Jesus says, I am that way. And here's the, here's the crazy thing is Jesus says, I came to give life and to give it abundantly. And eternal life, eternal life is a quality of life that starts right now. So in other words, so often in life, and I remember this is the case before I was a believer, is you're going through life and you're, you're just in these wastelands in some senses. Like you see, maybe you're flipping through Instagram and Facebook and you're seeing all these pictures of people living life and you go home to your life and you look around and you don't have the picture perfect family and you're miserable and you're just like, you're working this dead end job. I don't know what it is, but it's really hard because we see all these other people's lives and we see the abundance. And that's truly what I believe. That's what I believe that we're all after. And Jesus is the solution. He's the answer to that. Where Jesus is, there is life and life abundantly. That's why the psalmist in Psalm 8410 says, better is one day in your courts. In other words, better is one day in the presence of God than a thousand elsewhere. Because you could spend a thousand days in the unit that Colton was hunting sheep in and you're not gonna see Jack. But then you come over here and one day, I would trade, no joke, I would trade one day here for a thousand over there. Because right here, like, it just brings you almost to tears. When you, you just hear the cows mewing and the bulls bugling. And this is the place you wanna be. And I don't know, maybe you're not with Jesus right now. You're in a different place in your life. And life is just, I don't know, it's just one of these things where it just grinds on and day after day just slips by you. Jesus has more for us in life. Maybe you're a Christian and you're not experiencing that with Jesus. Well, Jesus isn't a liar. He said, I came to give life and to give it abundantly. It's like hunting in this unit right here. And I wanna challenge you. Jesus doesn't ever come up short. We're the ones who come up short in the equation. And maybe you need to, maybe you need to re-engage, Maverick. You need to re-engage and get back with Jesus because where he is, there's life and life abundantly. It's like this compared to that wasteland that we were hunting. That thing was a wasteland. So I'm a practical guy. Like I don't believe in this whole fairy tale, mythical Jesus. I go to church and everything's good. When I read the Bible, there's practical steps to walking with Jesus that produce this abundant life. And I'm not talking about like, there's bad times in life and you go through garbage and there's storms and there's trials, but the word of God tells us that we can rejoice in those trials because of Jesus. And that it produces character and perseverance and hope and all these other cool things. But here, here's the deal. We wrote this resource called The First Mile. And I don't know if maybe you've been a Christian for a long time. Maybe you're just exploring what it would mean to even follow Jesus or what that would look like. Uh, we wrote this resource called The First Mile and it teaches you the basics and just fundamentals of who God is, why you need a relationship with him, and then how to have a practical relationship, like resources on how to be a, a great husband, how to, how to lead your wife, or how to be an awesome wife, and how to have a thriving marriage, how to lead your kids, how to even engage with the Lord and like talk to the Lord and read his word and study it so that it comes alive because the word of God is living and powerful. 
So we wrote this so that you can, you can learn and grow and actually have a vibrant, abundant life that Jesus promises. So if you want a copy of that to grow and to learn more about Jesus and to press in, and, and my prayer is that you would grab a hold of life and life abundantly like up here, uh, go over to our website. It's www.limitlesshunting.com and request a copy of it. You won't be disappointed. You won't be disappointed. There's a real place that God has for you and he has plans to prosper you and not to harm you. So go over there and grab it. It's absolutely free. We want to send it to you. We hope you all enjoyed this week's video. Next week, follow along as Justin and I go out into Alaska in pursuit of giant bull moose. These next few episodes are going to be absolutely action-packed. Justin and I both take record bull moose. It is just an absolutely awesome adventure. There's bears, ptarmigan, fish, you name it. You're not going to want to miss these, and we are extremely excited to release these next few episodes. If you'd like to follow along with what Limitless Outdoors is doing, you can head to Instagram or Facebook at Limitless Outdoors underscore official. Or if you'd really like to get some insider information and see what we're doing, get tips, gear reviews, all sorts of really unique information, you can head to Patreon and partner with us there. It is Patreon forward slash Limitless Outdoors. In the meantime, God bless, and we'll see you again in God's limitless outdoors. You boys working hard or hardly working?